thank you all for coming out uh, to LSC Summit 2020. Um, my name is Rod Wilson. I'm the executive director of Virginia Burns Hope Center. And I feel really tall. I don't, I, I'm, I'm a short guy. I'm not used to being up that high. All right, so thank you all for coming out. Um, this summit hopefully will give you everything you need for LSC, any information you need to know how to run, it, run for office, to, if you're on LSC, what you need to be effective. Um, and whatever we don't know, because we don't claim to know everything, we, will, we do claim that we will try to figure it out and help out as best as possible. LSC is for all is a coalition made up of the Hope Center, uh, Raise Your Hand, uh, raise your hand, Janine. Can you raise your hand up? All right. Uh, is Jenny here? Jenny, you sit somewhere. I'm going to see some of the folks from the coalition over in the back. Uh, Tracy, are you here in the front? And I'm with the Hope Center. We got Coco. Uh, where you at, Miss Irene? All right. These are some of the members of the coalition. CTU. Sarah, where you at? Sarah Rothschild. She's over there. Okay, there you go. All right, you know, I got good eyes, so y'all got to help me out. Um, Sarah, watch out. Uh, who else am I missing? Pilsen Alliance. Moy, you here? There you go. All right, Pilsen Alliance. Who am I forgetting? Uh, Blocks Together. Is Cecile here? I mean, I mean, not Cecile. Cotto here? Nope, not yet. Okay, great. Uh, Q. Nikita is here. I know Nikita. Oh, yeah, Nikita. There she is over there. Um, did I miss anybody? Did I get everybody up there? Northside Action for Justice. Mark, where you at, Mark? All right, cool, cool, cool. So we come together as a coalition to do what we can to make sure local school councils are effective. The LSC is the only democracy we have within our educational system in Chicago, because our school board isn't elected. But we do have one thing that's unique across the country, which is local school councils. This doesn't exist nowhere else. For parents to be elected by parents, Communities to be elected by community, uh, teachers, students, non-teaching staff, and to be able to determine the instructional leader for the school, the principal, to determine discretionary funds and how best to use them for your school, to develop a plan for school improvement for your school. This doesn't exist anywhere. So we want to make sure that we don't lose this power that we do have. There have been efforts over the past 20 years to take powers away from the local school councils. Everybody say boo. Yeah, that's right. So next time you hear one, you know you, know you got to help us fight it. <laughs> no, there have been, but we believe in making sure we do all we can to make sure we make sure local school councils are more effective. We do it in primarily four areas. One is mobilizing local school council members together in a summit format like today. Also, monthly, we do a thing called the gathering because we know if you're working in silos by yourself, sometimes it seems difficult. Sometimes it seems like, you know, I'm in this by myself. And if all of us are going through the same things, but just in silos, it doesn't make sense. How do we come together to solve some of our problems together? And also connect with other folks who've had the same issues and gotten over them. How do we learn from each other? So we do... Uh, gathering. So the gathering is every monthly and then we do a summit every, right now every two years. That's one way that we worked to bring local school council members to have to be more effective. The second way is through trainings. Some of our members are uh, certified LSC trainers. So trainings based on the modules you have to have to be, uh, stay on your LSC, you know, the modules you have to go through. But also we we'll create trainings based on what you need for your particular LSC. So we can work to pull more, like we're doing one today, on how to run to win. You know, we can put a training together based on what the need is. So trainings is a second area. The third is technical support or assistance. How do you, if you got a problem happening at your LSC, you need some help, give us a call. We'll, we'll come out. We'll, you know, we'll talk through, we'll, we'll work through what we know of the Illinois school code and what the powers are and the law is so that you can best solve whatever problems that you have. But we, we do that together. So we got trainings, we got gatherings, we got technical support, and the last thing will be policy. LSCs are not governed by Chicago 
by Chicago, the uh, city council. It's governed by the Illinois School Code, so it's governed by the state. So we have policy state general assembly that empowers local school council members. Because who knows, that, who, who knew if your school is on probation that you lose n more than half your powers? Anybody know that? Raise your hand. What sense does that make? If I run for office, I get elected in April. My job is school improvement. Why should my hands be tied when I take office in July? It doesn't make sense, does it? Yeah, see, that's one of them things, you know, to disempower local council members. We want to change that. That doesn't make sense to us. You know, why shouldn't every school in Chicago empower their parents and community members to have the same type of power local council, meaning charter schools, contract schools? Why shouldn't they have the same power? That doesn't make sense to us. So anyway, but the point is we work on policy so that we can make sure that LSCs are empowered. Does that make sense? Is that cool with you all? You sure? All right, now, I want to make sure we got some people in the room ready to do this. Oh, uh, we do, huh? That's, what I, that's all I need to hear. All right, cool. So first, I want to acknowledge a few people. First, I want to acknowledge a champion of local school councils, uh, someone who has been there from the beginning. I know since I've been around working on the LSC Empowerment Bill, he's been supportive. And that's the, assist, the majority leader of the Illinois State House of Representatives, State Representative Harris. Could you stand up for us, Representative Harris? And been supportive of every time any efforts that we have around local school councils. Uh, do we have, um, where's Sarah at? Sarah, I don't see it. Okay. Do you have anybody else? Okay. So we have one CPS board member, um, Dwayne Truss, and the second, where, where is he at? Okay. We appreciate, oh, it's two of them, okay. <laughs> All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. So we got two CPS board members. All right, we must be, I feel a little important. We got two CPS board members. All right, cool. All right, so hopefully what you're here today can help with your decisions that you make as CPS board. Um, again, but everything we're doing as LSCs for All is about how do we make sure local school councils are more effective? How do we make sure local school councils are more effective? And we're going to start today off with a panel. Um, if I could have our panelists come to the um, stage, please. And does everybody have the, uh, your, your itinerary for today? We do have one change. The what is an LSC? That's going to be in room 126, not 125. 126. So the four workshops today, and I'll go over them again later, are what is an LSC? And that is for people who don't know anything about local school councils, or you from a charter school, or what you want the basics, ABCs of what an LSC is. That'll be that workshop. If you're currently on an LSC, or you on track, that'll be another, another workshop. workshop. So we have workshop current LSC members. So looking at where you at with um, principal evaluation, your budget, your CIWP, that type of thing. If you are interested in how do we move policy that empowers local school council? We have one on our LSC empowerment bill. And that can, that'll go over what the bill is, but also what it takes to move the bill. And how does Springfield work? And then the last one is, I'm getting a little older now. Um, right, there you go. Most important, not most important, but one of the most important things. How to run to win, you know. If you want to, if you're interested in being an LSC member, or you tried before, and you just want to know how to run an election, then that is the next. That's the fourth workshop. So we got based on where you enter at, we got different workshops for you, so that you know everybody is covered, and we're going to run the same workshops twice. So you get to pick two that you want to go to, or if you want to go the same one twice. I guess you could do that too, but hey, it's up to you. We're not, we're not, we're not saying go here. All right. Uh, we also want to thank the CTU for, and the CTU Foundation for allowing us to use this space. Um, we do appreciate it because I know we wouldn't be able to afford it without their support. Thank you. It, um, I think those are the main things. Is everybody excited? Is everybody in here about empowering local school councilmen? I need to know that first. 
If you're not, the exit is to your right, my left. I just want to be clear so we know who in the room. How many people are on the LSC in this room? Raise your hand if you're on the LSC right now. Okay. Great. How many people are interested in becoming a part of LSC member? Or know they're going to run again, run in April? How many people are here just to get information? They're not sure. Okay, okay, okay. We got any charter parents or charter teachers in here as well? Okay, 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 cool. We wanted to make sure we hit all the demographics of folks who may be interested in local school councils. I think we got a nice, um, good grouping of folks in the room. Hopefully the workshops, oh, I know they're going to be good, so hey, I'm not even... Okay, April the elections, and then right after the elections, it may look out because we'll have another uh, gathering and we'll be looking at how to set up your organizational meeting. Because, you know, once you win July 1st, you take office, and July 1st through 14th, you have to have your organizational meeting. But what do you need to have in place for that? What is, what is that organizational meeting? How, what are some of the best practices? We want to make sure you all get the, um, hit the ground running. Cool? All right, so with that, uh, we got our distinguished, uh, distinguished panel. Um, distinguished, right? I get you. Do you want to introduce, or you want me to? Okay. So first, we have Ms. Karen Zakar from Northside Ask for Justice, who <laughs> Karen was on the first local school council when they when the law passed in '89, and the uh, and in '90. They had, they ran their first election. She was on that. Did you know when the LSCs first started, the first, was it four or five years, you two? The first four or five years, scores went up in CPS consistently. Five straight years. Thank you, sir. When the LSCs first started, the first five years, the scores in CPS went up consistently. And then after that, there was, there was this other thing that passed. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> that took me out control, but that's a whole other thing. All right, next we have Jeanette Taylor Smith. Uh, I always want to say Smith. Jeanette Taylor, Alderman Jeanette Taylor. <laughs> Who is a veteran LSC member. 19 years? She, 20 years, she was an LSC member at Mollison, at Mollison School. <laughs> Je, Alderman Taylor. And last but not least, we have the the dapper, the uh, the the, 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 the who I, I don't know if you got me on the Kangos or, the, or what. <laughs> Mr. G. Two Brown, he's the director of the the director of the National J Journey for Justice Alliance. <laughs> and G. Two is why I into in working with LSCs. We were on our first LSC together at Jackie Robinson in like, 99, 2000 when they uh, end up kicking us off the LSC. <laughs> Cause we, anyway, it's neither here nor there. We, that's, that's a good story we could tell, though. But no, anyway, also, G2 used to, um, he was one of the first people. Where Mac at? Mac in the room? There you go, Mac, McDowell, G2, and a few other folks. I don't know if they the rest of in the room, were the first ones to push CPS to train other people outside of CPS to train local school council members. And they pushed for it and were, was one part of the first cohort of folks to become LSC trainers. Um, they also would have, you know, organized LSC summits and really did a lot of work that I know that I was fortunate enough to be somewhat a part of that helped push me while I'm at, you know, working with local school council, but Mr. G2 Brown. And we have our moderator for the panel, Mrs. Joanna Maldonado, Chicago Teachers Union. Yeah. LSC supporter, and I'm not. I'm gonna quit talking right now and let Joanna take it from there. All right. All right. We gotta. We gotta keep. Um, what is it? Our, our strike energy alive. So who schools? Our school. Who schools? Our school. That's right. And no better power can we do that through LSCs. Um, and we really need to use this time here. We're going to use this time here to look at back at the history of what we've done in LSCs. We have three great panelists here today um, that's going to tell us a little bit more about where LSCs came from, the intent, the purpose, and the, and the life of it. So G2, um, if you could share a little bit more about your involvement in the past with LSCs. And that's a question for all of the panelists so that, 
you know, we're coming from different ways of life and where we are now. Um, if you can share with our members here, what, what, what was your involvement with LSEs in the past? new school microphones. Okay, <clears throat> um, so first it's an honor to be here. I, I think it is really uh, like inspiring to see this room. As Rod mentioned, the first LSC summit we did was in 2007, myself and Brother McDowell, um, and I want to talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, I have been working in the Bronzeville area um, as a community organizer, youth leadership, or youth organizer since 1991, since I was 24 years old. Um, and as I worked in schools, one of the things that I noticed as we were working with children was that there was an equity issue, there was a justice issue. Um, and where did we have a voice? And that's when I was introduced, to be honest with you, by Valencia Reyes from Designs for Change, uh, Julie Westerhoff and Johnny Holmes from Parents Unified, for, uh, Parents Unify for Responsible Education, those former school reform groups. How many folks remember the school reform organizations from the 70s, 80s, and 90s? They introduced me to local school councils. And I was in a training with Johnny Holmes, and, and he was really giving it to me much different than CPS was giving it to me. We had a saying that we walk in CPS LSC trainings more confused than when we walked in. But when I trained with Pew, I got a sense of clarity. Um, and so that began, and, and as Rod mentioned, I joined, we joined the um, LSC at Jackie Robinson um, in the late 90s. But in 1999, I became an LSC facilitator. Um, we had pushed Chicago Public Schools to have something called the LSC Institute. Um, and I want to really explain why this was so important to the development of COCO in a second, the Kenwood Oakland Community Organization. At that time, I was the board president of COCO. I was not staff, I was a volunteer. And we were working in these schools, but we began to see the housing projects close on the State Street Corridor, housing projects close on Cottage Grove, 44th and Cottage Grove, and began to hear uh, inklings about schools are getting ready to close. So in 2004, there was this plan called the Mid-South Plan. It was a plan to close 20 out of the 22 schools in the Bronzeville area. Now, folks, remember, Bronzeville is 10 minutes from downtown Chicago, right off the lakefront. I always compare Bronzeville to Cabrini-Green because similar proximity from downtown. Does that make sense? But if you go where Cabrini-Green used to be, is there any memory that we were ever there? So we understood that Bronzeville was going to suffer that same fate if we didn't fight this plan to close schools because it was not about school improvement. The late Michael Scott said in a CPS board meeting that Terry Peterson told him to close schools in Bronzeville. Who in here remembers who Terry Peterson is? Mr. McDowell, who is Terry Peterson? He's, uh, he's the chairman of the Chicago Housing Authority. He was the former executive from the Chicago Housing Authority. So how is someone from the Chicago Housing Authority recommending where to close schools if this was not about real estate? If this was not about remaking urban landscapes. So we had been working with local school councils, and we had to figure out a way to fight back. And so I began to reach out to local school council members that I had been training um, from, Mollison, from Mollison, from Fuller, from Revis Elementary School, from Doolittle East Elementary School, and we fought back and stopped the Mid-South Plan. That's when we realized that we, and, and by that time, I had already started working with Mr. McDowell at John M. Smith on the west, on the near west side. And he became an anchor in the work we were trying to do. And so in 2006, or 2005, we formed our education committee, which was called the Mid-South Education Association, because we knew we needed an ongoing body of grassroots education experts not just to fight privatization, but to advocate for a community vision for what public education could look like. And who better to be the core of that group than parents and community members who are already actively engaged in their schools? That makes sense? So that's how we formed our education committee that began to really fight back against school privatization. But what I noticed was that from our education committee, we had a cadre of people that had a high level of expertise. But we were engaging 
representatives from the Office of Local School Council Relations who are out and out lying to parents, telling them that they didn't have the right to evaluate their principal, that, um, that even if they evaluate their principal, uh, give their principal a negative evaluation, there's nothing they can do about it that if the principal does not vote in their favor, their vote doesn't matter. And this, this man's, can I call names, Mac? This man's name was Reverend Michael Bland. He was an LSE facilitator for Chicago Public Schools. And he was going around in our community lying to LSE members about their power. So what we realized was that CPS was very smart with when local school councils were invented. They created the mechanism to train LSCs with no input from anybody else. So basically, they miseducated local school councils out of the public consciousness. Does that, am, I, am I being clear? So even though we have the largest base of grassroots elected officials in the world, in the world, most folks don't even know what LSCs are. We have the greatest form of democracy and public education in the world. Yet most parents didn't even know who local school councils were. So in 2006, we worked with a good brother in Chicago Public Schools who just retired named Joe McCord. He was the co-director of the Office of LSC Relations. Joe McCord then worked with us to develop the, the second LSC Institute where Coco had a cadre of seven parents who became certified as LSC trainers. And we began to do LSC trainings all over the city. We trained parents in Pilsen. We trained parents in Logan Square. We trained parents in Uptown. We trained parents in Inglewood. And our trainings were completely different than the ones that Chicago Public Schools were offering. Because even though we went through lessons one through six, which, again, I don't, I'm, I'm, a little, I'm a little rusty, so I don't know if it's still one through six. But, but we came through it through a, a, a lens of community empowerment that this is about us taking care of institutions in a system that has never been intended to serve us in the first place. And so that's where I met Jeanette. Jeanette was a local school council member at Modison Elementary School, had come to a training that me and Mr. McDowell had done, and from there it was history, right? She couldn't, she couldn't get, we stopped calling her, and she began coming to Coco Meets, became a Coco leader, eventually replaced me as the education organizer at Coco, and now she's the alternate of the twin board. Probably getting ready to run for Congress or something like that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but I, I will close with this. Um, the biggest issue in public education and as, as uh, Rod mentioned, my work now is I, I'm the director of a national organization called Journey for Justice, which is like a national, or, or imagine a national organization filled with groups like this, membership-based grassroots organizations. I just came back from Jackson, Mississippi. In Yazoo, Mississippi, they're in the middle of a state takeover. Yazoo, Mississippi. Now, we know that state takeovers have not worked anywhere in the United States. In New Orleans... After seven years after Hurricane Katrina, 79% of the schools still got to be an F grade in the state exam. So what they did is they cooked the books. They lowered the scores, they lowered the, the standards to make the schools look better. But even today, 50% of those schools are BFF schools. The biggest issue in public education, why local school counts are so important, is we must have accountability to the public. You know, when people always talk about accountability, they pressure they, they, they target schools, right? But they never address the inequity that runs so deep in Chicago that you can go on 44th and King Drive and a child has a completely different reality in the classroom than a child that lives on diversity in Ashley. And if you are not prepared to confront that, you are not prepared to deal with public education in an honest way. So our tool, and we are not playing the race card, we are not making this. If you, if you do a scan, of the curriculum offerings of children throughout the city of Chicago based on race and class. It will show you what our work is. Local school council members, being on a local school council, gives you the power and the responsibility to make sure that you are bringing equity in public education. I served on the Diet Local School Council for 10 years, which means I built, I built relationship with children for 10 years. I saw the school improve, and I saw it sabotaged by the district. 
state-sponsored education sabotage, which is why we fought so hard for Diet High School, is because we knew the real story. The narrative was not the real story. So I'll just ask you all, take seriously the responsibility. Know that you are part of a, a, a movement that started in grassroots communities. Uh, as Karen uh, is one of the original LSC members, one of my mentors was the late Doug uh, Gills, who actually helped write the legislation for local school councils and told me that's the way that we need to go. So thank you very much. I'll, I'll pass the mic. All right. Uh, thank you. If you can, Karen, can you tell us a little bit about the first time they ran for an election, the original intention around LSCs, and a little bit of history from your perspective? Sure. So first of all, I want to say um, I'm so honored to be on the stage here with um, two of my big education heroes. So I'm going to talk kind of fast because I think we all really want to hear from these guys. But I, I am the old person up here. So um, yes, I can go back to the, the beginning of the 1980s when um, really, you know, a lot of parent organizing was happening. And that obviously wasn't the first time. Some of y'all may remember, you know, or at least have heard of in the 1960s, the big fight against the Willis wagons, right? So this fight for, for equity, for resources for neighborhood schools has been going on a long time. And I really want to emphasize that, that parents are the strength in this fight. So G2 has already said that. I'm a teacher now, but, but parents are the strength in this fight. So um, in the early 1980s, there, was, um, there were a lot of teacher strikes, actually. And um, parents were running strike schools as a result and finding that um, the curriculum that was being taught in their children's schools was uh, really dumbed down, was shoddy, was basically a message to children that uh, you are not important. It was called Mastery Learning. Some of you might remember that fight. But um, a group was formed called Parent Equalizers of Chicago to, around the city, fight against this dumbed down version of curriculum. And when G2 talks about um, the class differences in curriculum, so if you went to the magnet schools, which were the schools that, you know, a lot of the white and richer families were attending, you didn't find that curriculum, you know, you, and you found a whole lot of extra resources. But in our neighborhood schools, that was the curriculum that was present and, and we lacked all kinds of resources for students. So parents were, um, were fighting regularly um, for that equity. And in that, um, in that mix of events, um, Harold Washington was elected mayor. And Harold Washington um, formed the Parent Community Council, right, because um, he understood, as we understand, that parents and community are the ones who, you know, they have the vested interest in the children, right? It's our children, and we want their success. No one can want it more than us. So the Parent Community Council was really the force behind the LSC legislation. And so it was so exciting when the bill was passed, and hordes of people came out to run in that first election. And... Um, so I was elected uh, chairperson in that first election at Stockton Elementary School. I know some of y'all think that, oh, Northside, they have everything. But um, nope, <laughs> our schools in, in Uptown, you know, served low-income children, primarily children of color, and we were fighting for resources as well. Um, in those very early days, um, CPS had not caught on to how they could co-opt the system. So in the first couple of years, um, we, we didn't, there was no actually formalized training yet. So CPS hadn't yet come in to, you know, sort of mix people up as G2 referred to. And we got our information, our assistance from groups like Designs for Change and Pure, right? People who were out there who shared our vision for equity and um, culturally relevant curriculum for our children, right? So. Um, we got information from them, and I just want to say there's a few things we learned in the process that I think parents, you know, you all today 
um, it still is relevant, right? So for one thing, we studied a lot, right? Like we read a lot of stuff. I mean, G2 referred to, you know, the expertise that, that they gathered. We did the same thing. So we got information from these groups, but we also studied ourselves. So for example, at Stockton, we were able to get rid of tracking by um, basically just presenting, you know, the literature that we studied to say that uh, it was better for children to be in mixed groups where the resources were equitable because at least in our school, they let the quote unquote smart kids go on all the field trips and do all the good stuff. And you know, it was very, like very segregated almost, right? Um, so we were able to do that through our study. Um, I think another thing that is just so important is if you are a parent or community rep is to constantly be doing outreach. So we went to all the events at the school to talk to parents. We came early to catch parents who were dropping their children off at school. And we did a lot of knocking on doors. And um, we would find out from parents um, all kinds of things. So sometimes individual issues, but sometimes bigger ones. Like that's how we heard there was a special ed teacher who was putting children who misbehaved in the garbage can and throwing garbage at them. That's something, I mean, you got to deal with stuff like that, right? So that allowed us to go to the school and, and, you know, force them to institute some policies and to deal with teachers who were doing that kind of action. It allowed us to find out that all day kindergarten was a huge concern for parents. And then to um, prepare parents, okay, when we bring this up at the LSC, you're gonna be there to fight for it, right? So we can win this. Um, we studied the budgets. We made our own plans for the discretionary funds. We didn't let the principal just come in and, okay, here's how we're gonna spend them. No, nope, we brought our own whole list of everything it was gonna be. So there was all day kindergarten and we won that. Um, and just the last thing I wanna say, um, and I think Rod referred to this, um, we learned after the first election um, how very important it is to run as a slate. Um, you know, there's six parents, there's two community, there's two teachers and the principal, and then in high schools, a uh, student rep as well. Um, I mean, obviously you can be a voice as one person, but there are all those votes, right? And um, principals have way of, ways of co-opting people, um, even parents. So it's really important that you get a group of like-minded people who are really going to fight for a particular vision of the schools. So just as an example, we, um, in one of our early campaigns, we called our slate the 100% campaign. And that was because the school kept um, taking this lesser view, like, and Honestly, schools sometimes still do this today. Like, well, if we get 80% of the kids to reach this goal, we're successful. Or, well, we'll take the kids who are closest to meeting the standardized test scores and we'll, we'll push them. And they were, they were leaving out a lot of our children. So our campaign was basically, you know, that we were gonna focus on the needs and rights of every single child. And when you come with a vision like that, that speaks to the interest of parents, that comes from what parents have told you um, that's what it takes to be successful. So I just want to urge you, um, yes, get that training from groups like COCO um, because CPS will never tell you what you need to know. Um, never stop organizing other parents. Never stop listening. You know, that's your base. And um, find other like-minded people to fight for the things you believe in. True wealth of knowledge up here. Um, Jeanette, I wanted to ask, do you think LSCs are still relevant today? And if so, why? <laughs> <laughs> of course you would ask me that question. Um, of course they are relevant. Um, I don't know, I was a teen mother, so by the time I was 19, I had four kids. And so I, I just, when I, when I bring my conversation to the table, it's the truth. I did not want to be on the LSC. I'm like, <laughs> don't talk about them. I didn't want to be on the LSC. You in there for four hours, you got to listen to these long elaborate speeches. You sitting there with people who think they know everything and they really don't. Um, the principal is supposed to, in their eyes, run the meetings. And that's the furthest thing from the truth. And I knew what I was feeling. And I felt like because I wasn't as educated as the principal was that I didn't know, which was really the opposite. 
uh, my lived experience makes me who I am. And I learned that from my mentors. And so because I had the lived experience and my heart was telling me, she's spending too much money from a program that all of the kids can't use. Or they hiring their friends and their friends couldn't organize their way out of a wet paper bag. And so I had all those feelings, but because I was by myself, I felt alone. And so um, I was a yes ma'am. Everything the principal said, I said yes. But then I started to see that the same books that I used, my kids were using. Like, and that just didn't seem right. I saw other schools that were getting this technology and we weren't even wired for Wi-Fi. And so I knew something was wrong. And so it always goes back to those initial trainings. I went in, I came out more confused than I went in because it's a baby crying, it's somebody on the phone, whoever they got doing the training, speaking all low. So I just, I didn't get it. And so I had heard of Coco and I um, was like, I'm gonna go to one of Coco's trainings. And the first thing I heard in that meeting was, do you know you have the, the power to hire and fire the principal? And I was looking through the books. I'm like, I don't see that nowhere. Nobody told me that. I was like, tell me more. And so I just learned that it was my responsibility and my duty to make sure, A, I'm there, and B, that I'm listening to not only my voice and these young people, because part of the problem is we ain't listen to the young people in these buildings. They tell you the story every day about what's bad, what's good, who not doing what they are supposed to do. And so I knew very early on that I had to change my mindset of sitting on that LSC because I didn't want to. And so after I met Brother G2 and, and Brother McDowell and they was talking about coming to more meetings, I'm like, look, we've been meeting about the meeting for years. Like, when are we going to move? But I didn't understand that it was building me to be in this space. And so local school councils don't happen around the country. They're only, and so we have the power to make the changes that we want to see in the school. And I always say to people, um, I realize what community organizations really do when they wanted to come close Mollison. And so Mollison sits on 44th and King Drive. We have been around all of these vacant lots. They had knocked down the projects. And then right across the street, they built this very expensive condom condominiums. I was like, them ain't for us. I, I live on the next block and my rent $500. I don't know who this is for. And so I realized very early and I also realized to see people who were living in my community who now wanted to be on the LSC. Now, you want to be on the LSC, but the schools aren't good enough for you to bring your kids to. Mm. Put a pen in that thought, you all. Because they will put people on your LSC who don't belong there. And it's your responsibility and your duty not to let them on or make sure you're the voice. And so I was alone on my LSC. I wind up begging my pastor, y'all, to get on the LSC because I couldn't get anybody to go against this principal who was wrong, who ultimately wind up being fired because her and the business manager spent up the school's money. Let me not leave that out. And all the time I kept saying, the money missing. The money missing. Now, I ain't about personalities. I'm about performance. And I think we miss that being on the LSC. It's about I don't like a teacher. I don't like a principal. I don't care if I don't like you. It's about what are you doing in this building and how we are getting young people to read and divide. And so to the question of are they still irrelevant, of course they are. But we got to get back into the business of being on those LSCs. We've stepped away from them because they've become so controversial. We don't get along with the people. That's because we're listening to answer and not listening to hear each other. I'm going to say that again. We're listening to answer and not to hear each other. And so don't take for granted being in that seat and don't take for granted to getting these parents to be on these LSCs. What I used to tell teachers is all the time, you get fired, you can't come live with me. But I can say all of the stuff that you won't say. And I don't have a problem with challenging people who are wrong. And Chicago Public Schools, with all due respect, brothers, they have been wrong for years. <laughs> they ain't got it right. If it, was, if it was up to Chicago Public Schools, Mollison would have been closed in the late 90s, and it's still there. If it was up to Chicago Public Schools, we would have all charter and contract schools on the south side, and then I have great public schools on the north side. Let's just call it what it is. Now, if anybody who knows me knows that I didn't come to be nice, and I didn't come to water down the truth. It is what it is. And these policies are racist as the day is long. But don't believe that they are done. 
So we got to get back to a place where we start to talk to parents to get them involved in these LSEs. And that's hard. Why? Because I'm working 80 hours a week because I don't make a living wage. I got five kids. I'm struggling. I'm trying to keep a roof on our head. Keep them engaged on the very front end. One of the things that we used to do was stand outside before and after school. Why? Because that's the most of the time you're going to see the parents. And that's to talk to them. Hey, did you know we got a librarian? No librarian. Did you know we don't got no least restrictive environment room? Do you know young people getting their services under the stairs? And what I'm saying is the truth. That's what happened to Mollison in 2015 after the school closings. And they'll try to tell you that it was nothing wrong with the school closings. They lied. And they did not turn out the results that they said we was going to get. And so now they came out with the new utilization, and these schools are underutilized. They underutilized up north, too. I don't see you closing them. And so they are very irrelevant, and we got to make sure that we get our people on. And sometimes I, I agree with like-minded folks, but you need somebody on there who a hellraiser, somebody who going to watch and take notes, who going to be quiet. You need somebody that's going to cuss the principal out or two. And you also need somebody who is friendly and is going to go to all of your parents. And I was that person. I didn't pick sides. I didn't care about who was who. Right is right, wrong is wrong. There cannot be gray areas when it comes to educating our young people. All right, all right. Sure words, sure words. So we are down to the last three minutes, and there are three panelists. So in one minute, what is one thing that you think the LSCs need to accomplish today? So in a sentence or two, what is the one thing that LSCs need to accomplish today? Make sure that every school that sees public funds has a local school council. So charter contracts, if they get our public dollars and we paying for them, they need to be forced and pushed to be an LSC. So we're going to be coming down to the state. Where did we go? Did we leave? We're going to be coming down to the state to get them laws passed for LSC for all. Um, I'd say fight for, yeah, not only things at our own schools, but things that are for the entire system. So we need an elected representative school board like yesterday. And we need to fight for the sustainable community schools and the vision that brings to our school. A couple of sentences? Yes, <laughs> challenge. All right, because I got a whole bunch of, but, but um, I, I would just say um, build unity because in oppressive societies, oppressive societies feed off of isolation and a feeling of hopelessness. So whether you black, brown, white, the one thing that we have in common is that they don't really listen to us at different levels for different folks, but they don't, if the system has an agenda, the system moves that agenda. So build unity. When you hear somebody, so like when Jeanette is sitting here saying the system is racist as the day is long, if that's bothering you, check yourself. If that's bothering you, then your perspective is the issue. Because unity is rooted in self-determination. Unity is not rooted in submission. And what happens in multiracial coalitions is that black and brown people have to submit to a dominant narrative because the dominant narrative cannot accept the fact of the evil that has been done in this country and it continues to be done today. Now, I'm gonna say to my brothers on the school board, we're very critical of the history of Chicago public schools. But while you all are there, as we transition to an elected representative school board, you could be different. Joe McCord was different. Joe McCord came into Bronzeville, heard our complaints, and helped me organize a category of parents who had just as much right to train LSCs as Reverend Michael Bland did. You can be different. Now, <laughs> you don't have to deal with being in Mollison Elementary School, and I'm getting full as I'm saying this, and a whole classroom full of second graders run up to me a year after Overton was closed, grabbing on my pants leg, crying, saying, Mr. G2, will they reopen my school? Will they reopen my school? I hate it here. I hate it here. See, the people who make those decisions don't have to deal with that trauma of what children go through. 
CPS has done almost irreparable harm based on its policies. So for the schools that are underutilized right now, I want to say this to the room. CPS and the city of Chicago should be organizing a campaign to attract the people back that they have purged. So these schools should be sustainable community schools. The investment in our communities, we should have, every community should have a, a quality food production and delivery system. Every community should have affordable housing. Every community should have quality education. Every child, if you pay taxes, I don't care if your taxes is for a bag of chips. If you pay taxes, you have the right to go to a world-class school within safe walking distance of your home. And that must be our demand, y'all, just straight up. So that was too long sentences. With a colon in between. And I just want to say that, um, that we are in a state where we are able to take over our schools, that we have the power to do that. And I remember coming to Rod at one of the gatherings, because I was sat on the Gates LSC for three years and tried to ch make change. And like Jeanette and Karen were saying, one person can't do it all. And it's frustrating, right? And then one thing Rod said to me is, your principal is out organizing you. And that is what he's doing. He is organizing that LSC, and you have to work harder at organizing that LSC. So know that you are coming up against challenges, but also know that you are coming from a long history of dedication, of power, and uh, of righteousness, and that we can take our schools back, and that we can do this in every community, and there is no stopping us. I hope we have an excellent day today. Um, feel free to come talk to the folks up here in this panel. Rod, we're all here, so thank you for coming and we'll see you in the workshops. You guys. All right, so just a couple of things. Um, one, does everybody have a cell phone? Everybody pull your cell phones out. Pull them out, just pull them out. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm about to get you to do something. You're right. Just pull them on out. So we have a hashtag. So if you have Twitter, Facebook, we're using the hashtag, uh, hashtag LSCs for all. If you could just tweet it out. Uh, post it, and also hashtag LSC Summit 2020. I appreciate that. The other thing, I know G2 mentioned school closures and okay, how they impact our communities and, our communities and the whole, and uh, whole underutilization and, under and us, and we, us being, prepared being prepared for something like that. For some, Why shouldn't it be? Shouldn't it be? Because with our LSC Empowerment Bill, we have a provision within it that says no school can be closed or cohabitated without a supermajority vote of the LSC. You all are elected members of your school. Why shouldn't you have some say on what happens with your school? Are y'all with me? Do y'all think that's something that we should be doing? All right then, so LSC and Palmer Bill, don't forget it. All right, LSCs for all, what is our primary function as LSC for all? It's for school what? Improvement. We want to make sure LSCs are effective. That's our, that's be the most effective body, governing body that we can create. Because again, it, it doesn't exist anywhere. And I, and I failed to mention this earlier, this is a body where those who are not documented can run for LSC and determine and be a decision maker within their school. Can run for elected office and be a decision maker within their school controlling funds, uh, you know, looking at who's uh, the instruction leader. This is, this is unique. So we got to make sure we take full advantage of it and make sure we use it to make sure our schools are the best they can be. So with that, we're going to our workshops. So thank you.